Welcome back, everybody. This is Inside Fitness Radio Presents Total Fitness Podcast. My name is Matthew. I'm Walter. And today we're going to be talking about the number one reason your health is pretty much in the gutter. It is horrible because of this one thing, and that is stress. And to be more specific, we are going to be talking about stress versus distress. Not de-stressing, but distress. So when it comes to most health problems, when it comes to heart conditions, blood pressure, all these wonderful silent killers, you know, cholesterol, all that, that um, we hear about and, oh my gosh, they came out of nowhere. Did they though? You know, does a heart attack really ever come out of nowhere? Does high cholesterol, does high blood pressure really come out of nowhere? Sure, it may not be an issue at the time and you could live with these health issues for 20 plus years before it kills you. But it's typically onset from years of stress and more specifically, it's years of distress. And we're going to make the clarification of what stress is versus distress because stress isn't always bad. Sometimes you need a healthy amount of stress and cortisol in your body to function as a human being. But that's typically where we're going with this podcast today. So strap in and listen up. Strap in and listen up. It's going to be a <laughs> bumpy ride. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I, I agree 100% that stress is, is the silent killer. It's not necessarily about... Stress is the thing that leads you to make other mistakes, other things like eating improperly. Because I'm stressed out, I'm going to emotionally eat. Because I'm stressed out, I'm not going to sleep properly or I'm going to overwork. Those things all add up. So there's a cumulative effect that stress will give, definitely. When you are in distress. I think, yes, it's important to note that stress is a good thing in terms of the workout that you do, in terms of getting you off your butt enough to do other things. Um, I remember the stress of exams are happening next week. I'd better start studying. That's a good stress. Yeah. But uh, too often in this world now, um, we are just hit with stress constantly in the workplace, in the news, everywhere. Um, to the point where your body is sort of saying, what now? What now? All the time. And how do you deal with that? So definitely that that's a killer. Well, it's an interesting conversation because, again, stress isn't always a bad thing. And we know that. You could be, you know... When you wake up in the morning, technically, you know, if you look at the cortisol hormone and what it does to your body and the impact it has on your body, it's a healthy amount is good for you. You need stress in your life to actually function well as a human being. As you say, a little bit of stress pushes us to be a little bit better. Stress on the body allows us to build our strong stronger. There's all these kind of stressors that are not necessarily bad for us, but when it gets to the point of distress, from, as you say, a workplace scenario, a, a COVID pandemic, uh, I lost my job, my relationship's over. That is when it falls into distress. And it's typically not internal stress. And there is a difference between external, internal and external. And typically the type of stress that is external and is put on us is, is almost self-imposed. Nobody really goes up to somebody and is like, oh, you know, we're in a pandemic. That may be the external stressor, but then you self-impose all these anxieties onto yourself that then comes in the form of internal distress, which is, again, these rising blood pressure. You eat a bunch of junk food because it's your comfort. Uh, you stop working out because you have so much anxiety that you can't get off the couch. That's when it becomes really dangerous. And I was having a great conversation with a client actually, because, you know, this client has a lot of stress over the next couple of months for a massive project that they're working on. Now, a lot of what they are telling me was, I am stressed because of A, B, and C. And when you break that down, is it because of A, B, and C? Like, why are you stressed about A? And for example, let's say, why are you stressed about this exam? Why do you need, is the exam stressful? Not really. The exam is just a piece of paper with words on it. Is there anything life-threatening about that? Is there anything distressing about 
having to stare at a piece of paper with words on it, with questions on it. No, the consequences might be a little bit more stressful. Like the consequences of failing that exam, the consequences of not studying hard enough for the exam, all these sort of things that are external to the actual issue or the actual thing that we associate with the stress tends to be the reason why our lives tend to fall apart. And having this stressful situation or the stressful situation, sorry, tends to lead us to perform crappier, less optimally, and in an unhealthy way. And there's so much anxiety and almost, you, you tend to start hating it, I guess. You hate it, the thing that you have to do because you put so much onto yourself from these outside sources. Because again, I fail this exam, I'm not going to law school. I fail this exam, I'm not going to medical school. It, that's sure, one of the one of the things that could happen. But is that because of the exam or is that because of external pressure you're putting on yourself? Right, it's important to worry about yes. those things first. Yes. <laughs> yes. But it's, I, I mean, it's... Finish, go ahead. I'm just saying it's the thing with stress is you have to identify it first. What is stress? What is the stress? What is external? What is internal? The thing that most people end up, and this is just a general uh, assumption. Most people are not stressed in their day-to-day -day lives because they're living. It is because of an external cause. And they tend to associate everything that is going on externally to one specific thing that is going on in their life and feels internal to them. Because again, if it's ex it's exam that is looking towards your future, if you end up failing that exam, then yeah, this stress of everything is going to come crashing down because that one thing you were attaching onto, you failed it, so now it's going to break you down, right? It's important to realize that first before we even get into the health issues. Yes, but I I, I think you have to be aware that it is a different thing for every person, right? I mean, for some people, the only stress in their life is going to be, I live in a Ukrainian village and it's being bombed. That is something you have no control over whatsoever and your life is on the line. And if you have kids or whatever and you want to save them or you have no food or whatever, that's a stressor that you can't control. The thing with, with the exam is if you have caused the stress because you did not do the work, then I think it's bad on you, but you brought it on yourself. And if there's a stressor there, it's something that you could perhaps control in terms of mind. You can say, okay, I can talk to my facilitator at the school and try and get some sort of plan going so I can actually catch up and pass this course. But do you come from a family that is pushing you all the time? You must maintain high A's always. No one in our family has ever gone below that, which is usually bullshit, but family tradition. Um, and that sort of thing. And you can't control that stress. But again, you can control what you do about it right now. And, and I think uh, too often we allow the stress to stop us from doing the next right thing, which will get us out of the stressful position. Mm -hmm. It's easier as humans to go, I'm stuck, I can't breathe, I'm, I'm having an attack, of some, an anxiety attack of some kind. I don't wanna say anything about people who actually suffer from anxiety disorders. That's different from just allowing yourself to be overtaken by fear of an outcome. Mm -hmm. you know? but that's when it becomes distress, right? That, like you're putting yourself yeah. in these stressful situations where it's, yeah, you can't manage almost. And typically it's because of lack of certain things. You know, not everything can be accounted for, but if you know, for example, we'll take the exam. If you know you have this exam coming up, study it. Well, I don't have enough time. Why don't you have enough time? Because I didn't, and you go back and it's like, well, I don't have enough time because I didn't schedule enough time because I was working and then uh, I had classes and I had relationship thing and then this and that. And then it's like, so if you know there is a cert certain goal or specific thing that you're working towards and that is, and you know it's going to be stressful, like stress is a part of life. There's no way around it. But if you know that that is going to be a thing, it is the planning and the organization and the scheduling that comes with it that really does help out. And not just that, but being able to 
disassociate from having that perfect little plan and oh shit the plan didn't go to work uh the plan didn't go as exactly as i wanted to it's being able to adjust and reconfigure it and figure out the next step at the end of the day nobody really thought covid was going to last for how long it did nobody mm-hmm. thought they're going to nobody thinks they're going to lose their job nobody goes into a relationship thinking it's going to fail but when it does what do you have to do okay fair <laughs> but at the end of the day, when shit inev- inevitably fails, what do you do? A lot of the time, so many, and a lot of people, they just, this is no longer good stress. This is bad stress in my life that I don't know how to deal with. And that's where it leads to those health problems because it just builds and builds and builds. And they just, a lot of people just tend to ignore it. They don't want to deal with it. Nobody ever wants to deal with why did this person break up with me? Was I the issue? No, I'll blame it on them. Or maybe yeah, I am the issue, but I'm not going to address that. Or whatever it is. Why did I get fired from this job? What could I have been doing better? Maybe it just wasn't the right thing. But it's really hard when you're in a state of distress to rationally look at a situation and be like, how can I How can I get out of this? Yeah. And that's where health fails. That is the biggest killer is allowing your body to sit with that I guess you could call it trauma, right? You let it sit in that trauma of what you're dealing with, not to the sense of, not to the sense of like PTSD, but you know what I mean? Trauma is trauma. Yeah. Um, Okay. I I have a problem with the word trauma because it's been bandied about so much nowadays. You know, oh, I, I, I stubbed my toe and it was such a traumatic (laughs) thing. And come on guys. No, I I totally get that. There is trauma. And then there is, Oh, the hard knocks of life. Okay. So let me say just pain then. I'll say pain because okay. I hate that word too. I hate the word trauma. Um, but yeah, let's just call it pain or hard knocks. And some people are better getting out of it than others. Yeah. And that's all it comes down to is you have to rationally look at a situation and be like, is this going to be the Ukraine that is, there's bombs flying overhead. This could either be life or death. Or is failing this exam the end of the world? Probably not. You could probably retake that test. You could probably, even if you, this was your dream, this was your absolute dream, and this was the only chance you ever got. Switch, you got to switch directions. Yeah. That's all it comes down to. Nonetheless. Perhaps the question is, if you can ask yourself, what can I learn from this? Then it is good stress. Yeah. If it is, you can't ask yourself, why is this bomb falling on me? That, that's just an act of God or Putin, whatever. <laughs> but it, it's not something you have any, you, you're not going to learn a lesson from it. You can't learn, don't move to this country. Don't be born in this country. Yeah, don't be born right? here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So better, though, if, if you can look at a stressful situation and say, what can I learn? What can I learn from this bad relationship that broke up? How can I change? How can I grow? I've lost my job. What can I learn from this situation? While I'm looking for another job, yes. But can I learn something? Mm -hmm. Is this the right job for me? Is it just because of that person or did I have a hand in this? What was my behavior? If you can do that, then maybe you've got something. Yeah. It's also a matter of being able... I mean, you need these things to happen in your life. If you can't have... If you have a perfect little life and everything is so sheltered, you're you're not living life. But nonetheless, the point of this conversation is stress versus distress and why it is the killer and all the health problems that come with it. But we're on a good topic here where, yeah, I mean, how do you avoid it? How do you, because people will just tell you stress is going to kill you. The stress is going to hurt your body, your cholesterol, your, it's going to cause you to have bad eating habits and yada, yada, yada. Okay, great. So how do you get away from that? And exactly as you say, it's asking yourself the hard questions and really analyzing and auditing yourself and being able to say, I was part of that relationship. I probably did some bad things. I lost my job. Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah. 
I lost my job. Man, this light is lovely, eh? Yeah. It is it's very filmable. Golden hour. Golden hour here. But yeah, I lost my job. So what do I have to do next? Where where can I go from here? Yeah. But it has to be in a calm manner. I know at times it feels like the world's crashing down on you and nothing is going your way and it's going to feel like a failure. But realistically, when has anything in anybody's life ever been perfect 100% of the time? I don't think I've ever met a single person who said they've had more good days than just okay days and more bad days. The way I look at the way I look at life, and you can relate this to fitness, I always tell my clients this. A client will come in one day and they'll feel awesome. Best workout they had. The next week, they'll come in, crappiest workout they probably had. Week after that, meh, you know, wasn't good, wasn't bad. I got it done. One third of your life is probably going to be great. One third of your life is probably going to be okay. Meh, it's just going to go by. You have to do the groceries. You have to do your laundry. Another third of your life is going to be shit. You're going to break up. You're going to be short on money. You're going to have that job that you really wanted stolen away from you. That's life. Nothing is supposed to work out the way it's supposed to. We have these ideas in our head of how things are going to happen. And it's almost that the expectation is an added distressor. Because we want things to be perfect. We have, we look at Hallmark movies. It's almost Christmas time. You look at Hallmark movies. Please. You know, I wish this was my lighting every single time I filmed a video or took an Instagram. Golden hour would be great. But I live in BC where it rains all the time and it's gray skies 90% of the year. So when I get these chances, great. I will enjoy the sun when it's out. When it's raining, I'm going to be okay with that because I know that without the brain, I cannot have the flowers. That's very pretty. It's very true. I mean, I, I don't want to put down what you said because the, the the idea is exact. It was just very pretty. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, you need to look at life not through these, uh, again, social media filters. That, that say that, you know, this is supposed to, my life is supposed to be like this. Don't look at a movie star and think about how wonderful their life is. Unless you also realize how many roles they lost, how many times they were disappointed because they didn't get this or that or the other thing. And the fact that they may not have another job for another five years. If you make it too big, you're too busy and you're too big. Nobody wants you anymore. Yeah. And it's the same with all of our lives. Um, who played, was it Matt Damon, who is the Jason Bourne? Yes. Okay. So he did an interview recently and this is probably the best way to look at what we're like the best analogy. He was supposed to be hired for Avatar, which as we all know is what 2 billion or something, yeah. 1.5, like one of the, the biggest box offices ever. Right now, James Cameron came to him as like, this is the idea I cannot pay you, but I can give you 10% of the box office. That would have made Matt Damon, if it's what, 2 billion, 200 million, something like that, a ton of money. But he was already attached to the born supremacy or they were wrapping up, they were doing post-production, whatever. So he said, no. Think of all the people that had Bitcoin and then sold it to buy video games. I was one of those people. I had 10 Bitcoin and then I bought video games with it because the site that I was trying to buy video games was like, if you buy in Bitcoin, you get 20% off. Would I have kept it either way? If I, nobody knows what the future holds. We have expectations of what we think could happen. We have bad expectations of what we think could happen. And we try to find the route to perfection and it never works out. So why are you going to sit around stressing yourself out, knowing that you are diminishing your health and your, let's be honest, you're wasting your life thinking about these small stressors that in reality, after that thing is over, you're going to be like, why was I so stressed about this anyways? Yeah. You're diminishing the amount of time you have left on the planet, wasting it on that. And I mean, 
I know that in the beginning of our lives, we don't think about those things. But from where I'm sitting right now, the length of time left is an important thought. How can I make the most of it? How can I every, every day get all the juice right out, right? And and so you want to learn that as early as you can as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and do it with, with enjoyment, not with fear. And if you're always worried about what tomorrow may bring or am I keeping up with the Joneses or any of that shit, then it is shit. You're just doing yourself in. Yeah. That's all I had, so. Okay. That's all right. I feel like we got What do you guys think? <laughs> what, do you guys enjoy stress? Do you think we're full of full of it or do you actually agree with us? You know, let us know in the comments, guys. As always, you know where to find us. If you have any questions, anything you want us to cover, right below here. As always, stay safe. Stay breezy. We'll catch you next time.